Okay, hi, my name is Josh. I'm a uh, PhD student at University of Michigan, and I'm gonna be talking about our paper, The Dynamics of Not Unfollowing Misinformation Spreaders that I worked on with my advisors, um, Eric Gilbert and Jaron Budak. So many studies explore how people come into misinformation exposure, but virtually nothing is known about how or even whether people come out of it. And so we provided the first large scale account of the frequency and predictors of unfollowing misinformation spreaders. And although this is very understudied, it's important to understand. So regarding frequency, if unfollowing is relatively rare, then this would suggest that it's crucial to stop exposure from arising in the first place. But conversely, if people will already unfollow misinformation spreaders anyway, then this could maybe reduce the content moderation burden. And understanding the predictors of unfollowing is important because then we can design interventions to possibly further increase unfollowing of misinformation spreaders. So here's our basic research design, which I'll elaborate on shortly. We identified about 5,000 users who shared health misinformation flagged by PolitiFact on Twitter. And then at two time points, we pulled um, all the followers of these misinformation spreaders. And then we can model the frequency and predictors of a follower spreader edge that existed in time one being dissolved by time two. So our study draws on two buckets of related work, one related to misinformation exposure and the other unfollowing on social media. Regarding misinformation exposure, there's obviously no uniform pathway, but you could broadly think about factors at an individual or environmental level. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to briefly discuss a few of these. So there's some evidence that misinformation exposure is driven by selective exposure. That is to say, uh, people intentionally seek this out. So for example, people consume more unreliable news than search engines recommend. Um, for both Trump and Clinton supporters, users were more likely to visit untrustworthy websites consistent with their ideology. So this is ideologically driven. And in general, conservatives and people with um, more extreme ideologies are more likely to consume fake news. Now, misinformation exposure could also arise more incidentally um, through something like defaults. So in a slightly different domain, researchers found that most online news consumption was driven by users visiting their homepage. And by analogy, you could reason that the content from the people that a user follows can be thought of as the default content that a user sees. And so even if the initial choosing of defaults is this individual level decision, it can create a content environment that may subsequently incidentally expose users to misinformation later. Regarding unfollowing in general, uh, users are less likely to unfollow reciprocal ties. Redundancy, either in the form of uh, burst tweeting or posting similar content to other friends predicts unfollowing. And some studies found several ideological differences. So liberals are more likely to report political unfriending. And one survey found people self-reported that they were more likely to block an imagined cross-party misinformation spreader. So we had... Uh, two hypotheses, or two sets of hypotheses, one related to initial exposure and the others related to ideology about misinformation and following. So for initial exposure, what we mean is the number of misinformation spreaders that a user followed at the time of the first data poll. And um, by ideology, we measure the ideology of Twitter users um, using a measure developed by Pablo Barbera, which essentially assigns a political ideology score based on the accounts that somebody follows. And I'll talk about the hypotheses about initial exposure now. So essentially, it's not obvious if high initial exposure would be associated with higher or lower unfollowing subsequently. And we call these different competing hypotheses the reversion and inertia hypothesis. So here's how the reversion hypothesis could go. Redundancy is a predictor of unfollowing, and more misinformation ties mean more redundancy. Also, if misinformation exposure is more incidental than intentional, we could simply see a regression to the mean effect. And so the reversion hypothesis says that misinformation exposure may actually be partially self-correcting. That is to say, high initial exposure will be associated with high subsequent unfollowing. And then by contrast, we have the inertia hypothesis, which is the opposite. And the logic for this is that higher exposure to misinformation may proxy stronger belief in misinformation if that exposure is intentional. And higher exposure to misinformation may cause more belief in it as well. And so the inertia hypothesis says uh, the opposite, which is that exposure is partially self-reinforcing. That is to say, high initial exposure will actually be associated with lower unfollowing later. So here's what we did. We collected health misinformation URLs and tweets flagged by PolitiFact. Then we found users who shared this content on Twitter, and we denoted them misinformation spreaders. We also pulled the followers of spreaders. We then answered three questions across two studies. So we first looked at rates. What is the frequency of unfollowing misinformation spreaders? And are these people actually unfollowed at a different rate than non-misinformation spreaders? Then we turned to predictors and we said, what predicts somebody unfollowing one of these misinformation spreaders? 
here I'll just describe the followers a little bit. So most of the followers in this sample were conservative. There was a very high reciprocity rate, meaning a lot of these misinformation spreaders actually follow followers back. And initial exposure was very right skewed. Conservatives had higher exposure. And we also found that the most exposed followers were more likely to be um, ideologically extreme conservatives. And this is consistent with a lot of the uh, selective exposure literature that I talked about before. So now I'll turn to study one. And in study one, we're looking at rates. What is the frequency of unfollowing misinformation spreaders? And are these people unfollowed at a different rate than non-spreaders? And so the way that we did this is we selected a subset of 2,500 misinformation followers to essentially act as a panel. And then at two time points, six months apart, we polled all the friends of these followers. So we could see who they unfollowed from time one to time two. And then we look at the unfollowing rate of the misinformation spreader alters versus the non-misinformation spreader alters. So here's our first finding. Only 0.5% of misinformation ties were severed per month. Now, 0.5% is just like a very small number in absolute terms, but this is also a relatively low unfollowing rate if we compare this to um, other studies about Twitter unfollowing. And then turning to the second question, we found that users were actually more likely to unfollow non-misinformation spreaders um, than they were to unfollow misinformation spreaders. So misinformation spreaders were um, not very unfollowed, and in fact, the, the rate was even less than non-misinformation spreaders. So in study two, we looked at predictors. So what predicts somebody on unfollowing one of these people? To do this, we pulled the followers of spreaders identified in the previous section in both March and October. And so data is at this edge level, like a follower following a spreader. And then we built a model to predict if an edge that existed in T1 would not exist in T2. Uh, in addition to control variables, we had two main variables of interest which map onto the specific hypothesis I talked about earlier. So again, one variable of interest is initial exposure. This is the number of spreaders somebody followed at the, the first data poll. And the other is ideology. And uh, we operationalized ideology two ways. So first we had an indicator variable for whether a follower was liberal or conservative. And then we took the absolute value of this Pablo Barbera measure as a measure of ideological strength. And we also had some interactions between these. The main model, which I'm gonna interpret now, is a logistic regression with cluster robust standard errors. And it gave near identical results to a more complex Bayesian uh, multi-level logistic regression. So for the next few slides, I'm gonna be talking about average marginal effects. So the way to read this is that the xx is how a change in the coefficient affects the probability of unfollowing a misinformation spreader. And because these are average marginal effects, these are averaged across any interactions that may occur. And then I'll talk about the interactions uh, subsequently. So our first finding is that reciprocity is um, by far the biggest predictor. So people rarely unsevered reciprocal misinformation ties. And likely because so many of these misinformation ties were reciprocal, we have this low overall unfalling rate of misinformation spreaders. We also found that initial exposure and the spreader tweeting a lot predicted unfollowing. And so this is more consistent with the uh, reversion hypothesis than inertia hypothesis. Um, turning to ideology, we first find that liberals were more likely to unfollow than conservatives. And although there was no overall effect of ideological strength, we did see these pretty big partisan differences. So actually, extreme liberals unfollowed more than moderate liberals. And conversely, extreme conservatives unfollowed less than uh, moderate conservatives. And when we look at this reversion hypothesis, this idea of whether initial exposure predicts unfollowing later, it's true for both liberals and conservatives, but this reversion hypothesis is about 1.7 times as strong for liberals than it is for conservatives. So just to wrap up, I started the study by saying that um, a lot of prior work explores mission for misinformation exposure, but very little is known about misinformation on following. And so we looked at the frequency and predictors of unfollowing misinformation spreaders. Regarding frequency, we find that misinformation ties are very rarely severed. So they're unfollowed at a rate of just about 0.5% per month. And misinformation spreaders were unfollowed less than non-misinformation spreaders. So the implication here is once exposed to misinformation spreaders, people actually rarely unfollow. Regarding predictors, there were some things that predicted unfollowing misinformation spreaders. So first we found reciprocity had a very large downward effect. And one of the implications here is that if we were looking to do interventions or field experiments to further increase on following of misinformation spreaders, it might be beneficial to focus on these non-reciprocal edges. We also find that higher initial exposure predicts higher subsequent unfollowing. So this is more consistent with this reversion than inertia account. Um, but future work could explore the exact mechanism here, so it's unclear if this is redundancy or regression to the mean. And finally, we found these large partisan differences. So we found that overall, 
um, liberals were more likely to unfollow misinformation spreaders than conservatives. And at higher levels of ideological strength, this gap widened even further. Now, this is a consequential finding because earlier work shows that conservatives are more likely to consume misinformation. And our study is showing that they're also uh, less likely to unfollow misinformation spreaders. And so these dynamics combined would suggest that misinformation exposure among conservatives is very likely to persist at a high level. Overall, because misinformation on following is rare, it's important to stop exposure in the first place. And um, here's a one slide summary of our main findings and a link to the paper on the top right. Thank you for listening. And I want to say thank you to our funders, the Social Science Research Council and the uh, National Science Foundation.